Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family therapist for 31 years, and during that time, I have worked to study and understand human relationships. Uh, in this video, I want to clarify something that I think there's a fair amount of misunderstanding about in the general public and in the media. It is, what is a toxic relationship? And if you're confronted with one, what can you do? Let me start here by saying that a re relationship starts when the presence or the behavior or the values or the genes, biological genes of one person has a significant effect on another person, either temporarily or over time. Significant is a matter of judgment. Relationships can be voluntary, like I think I'd like to be friends with you. Or they can be involuntary, like parent and child. Um, that's important, as you'll see in a moment. Relationships can range. I suspect you've had this experience. Relationships can range from nourishing, where they uh, fill some important needs. They enhance your self-esteem, your security, your sense of fun, companionship, um, stimulation. They're nourishing, or some relationships are neutral. They have no particular effect on you. Uh, they don't build you up. They don't tear you down. Um, and then there are toxic relationships. What characterizes a toxic relationship? I propose any relationship with an adult or a child, living or dead, by the way, which lowers your self-esteem, raises your anxiety, increases your confusion, sadness, rage, frustration, or despair. If a relationship does that in one local instance or across time, I would say it is toxic. It's harmful. It depletes you. It blocks your growth. It stresses you. Um, have you experienced toxic relationships? I'd be surprised if you and I could talk and you said, gee, no. As we all do. Um, everyone, when we are confronted by a toxic relationship, uh, forges over time a strategy for reacting. Uh, some people run away, some people confront, some people name call, some people complain or whine, lots of different strategies. If you're in a voluntary relationship that is toxic, that depletes you, that discourages you, that lowers your self-esteem, that frightens you, that confuses you, if you're in a voluntary relationship, you have two powerful options. One is to learn the seven communication skills of lesson two in my nonprofit website and do some problem solving with the other person. Um, you also can leave if it's a voluntary relationship. It's not dependent, it's not based on need. You can leave which is what divorce is all about. In the second instance, if you have an involuntary relationship, somebody that you can't leave, like your mother or father, though in a way you can if you choose, what can you do if you're confronted by a toxic relationship that significantly stresses you um, frequently or all the time? What can you do? The first thing, in my judgment as a professional therapist, that you can do is check to see who's really running your life. It may be a true self. Your wise true self will guide you in all social and other situations. If it's a well-meaning false self, it will make things harder for you. If you don't know what a false self is, I encourage you when you're done with this video, when you have time, 
investigate lesson one in my nonprofit website or its related videos. Uh, here's the link. There's a group of videos that explains about personalities, true selves, and false selves, and how to free your amazing true self. So that's the first thing to do if you find yourself in an involuntary toxic relationship. The second thing to do, just like with voluntary uh, situations, study and learn the seven effective communication skills in lesson two at sfhelp.org. Here is a cluster of related videos that will give you a flavor of what you can do with these skills. They're essential for negotiating your half of a toxic relationship. Setting boundaries, for instance, one of the seven skills is assertion. Respectful assertion is a powerful way for you, without guilt, without anxiety, to assert your limits in a toxic relationship. It doesn't aim to change the other person. It does aim to inform them of how their behavior affects you and what actions you'll take if they don't shift. The third option that you have if you're snared in an involuntary toxic relationship is use the wisdom in three prayers, so-called prayers. They're guidelines from some very wise people. One is called the Serenity Prayer, which as you may know guides people in addictions and other compulsive behaviors. One is called the Gestalt Prayer, which is originated by a very effective, well-known therapist named Fritz Perls. Um, and the third is General Guidelines, whose author I'm not clear on. So here's a link to my website and study these prayers and, and refer to them in times of stress with toxic relationships. They really help. The last thing I can suggest for you is spend some time studying two video clusters, two videos. One is my best summary of options for dealing with difficult people. For instance, someone who is obnoxious or interrupts you or is self-centered or whines or complains or is negative or is superior or egotistical or devious or dishonest. This video will offer you some real concrete suggestions about how to deal with people like that. And here's a companion video, similar ideas on how to deal with, quote, difficult children. Kids who disobey, who are disrespectful, who are loud, selfish, devious, sneaky, really wounded, but difficult children. So here are two videos that I hope will add to your resources and your ideas. My purpose here in this video, just to recap, has been to um, acknowledge that among all the relationships in your life and mine, uh, they range from nourishing and nutritious to neutral to toxic or harmful. And I want to define what a, a toxic relationship is for your own mental clarity and four options you have if you find yourself in an involuntary toxic relationship. I hope you find this thought-provoking and useful. I appreciate your time. I'm glad you watched this. Thank you.